<laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> flying stars. I'm excited to do this. I've tried, like, again, try to break it down in a super simple way to, um, that way you can come in as a new feng shui person and understand at least what flying stars are. So, um, me, I'm Candice Berlanga. I'm a certified feng shui practitioner with the International Feng Shui Guild. Also the host of the Learn Feng Shui podcast. Um, and you can find me on all social medias at Learn Feng Shui, Learn Feng Shui now on Instagram. I'm on TikTok and I make some fun little videos on there. Um, but you can also find the podcast at learnfengshui.com. So you can listen to the podcast directly on um, the website. And so you can go there and then there's a new um, series of interviews I've been doing for the last few weeks. I have some really cool feng shui practitioners that I've interviewed. I want to showcase the, the difference, like the difference in the way we practice feng shui, because all of us are so different and we practice it in so many different ways. That series of interviews is also up on the learnfengshui.com website um, under the little hamburger menu. It's it's the little drop down menu and um, it's the segment called winning with feng shui. And so I want to highlight people's feng shui wins, other consultants. Um, and just really get to know them and that's been really fun and so i have some really fun interviews the audio interviews are on there um and then you can look at youtube for the video interviews let's see here western style feng shui versus eastern so before i get into some of this what i what i like to tell people is kind of the difference between the two styles of feng shui i'm actually going to make sure that i'm going to look at something real quick before i get started I'm actually also making sure I have sound because like one day I did a whole video with no sound. So, I mean, that would just be me. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Okay. So before I get into it, let's look at the different styles of feng shui. Mm, let me share that. I don't know how to share it. I was going to share it in my event. Okay, but anyway, we'll worry about that here in a second. So, um, but the point is, let's look at the different styles of feng shui. Um, because a lot of, some people, you know, they go in not really realizing that um, there's different styles of feng shui, especially if you are new. And so <clears throat> a more Western style feng shui would be a feng shui that refers to life areas and it sometimes it orients the energy map to the way you enter a building sometimes it does go off the compass direction but it will refer to these areas as like your love corner or your wealth corner or your family reputation area um the feng shui is set according to these fixed life areas or what are called life aspects or life aspirations um you know in these these nine areas <clears throat> so they use a lot of imagery colors and, and intention to um set the feng shui for the space a lot of it is very intentional um so that's more of a western style feng shui and classical eastern feng shui is what i practice it orients the energy map to the compass direction of the space feng shui it's it doesn't have anything that refers to like life areas or like this life aspirations it, because it's set according to your personal energy um, because all of these areas we believe are different for everyone and so it's set according to your astrology or your natal chart your four pillars of destiny chart your bata chart and it taps into the cheer energy from your natural environment um it's the collection and distribution of cheer energy in your space that is what classical or eastern feng shui um, is so for this reason we don't use a lot of items like this occasionally we will and today i want to talk about when we can use some of these objects and items so that'll be a fun little thing to to kind of talk about but generally we don't um with eastern or classical feng shui we always say that um the best feng shui is unseen so uh, you won't know a feng shui master has been there because again it's just collecting and receiving the energy in a certain way to support you so oh, i lost my picture there um what is feng shui so um it's falls into the category i'm not going to go through all this because i've done that before you can refer to the video on i think the eight sectors 
the link there. Um, feng Shui falls under a category of physiognomy. Um, physiognomy is literally the study of the, of the appearance of your environment, um, or well, Feng Shui is your environment. So it's a study of the appearance of something. So it falls in the same categories like palm reading, face reading. Um, it's also looking at like mountain shapes and water shapes. And the Feng Shui is just reading your environment. It's the appearance of your environment. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this because this is important. Um, and some feng shui consultants might not agree. So it, depending on what you've studied, but from what I, I've understood and I study um, physiognomy, because of the, the very nature of feng shui and the very nature and the connotation of feng shui being under this category called forms, um, the general form or appearance of something, the form will supersede the formula. So flying stars is actually a feng shui formula. We're starting to get into a formula. It's a formula mapping out the energy of a space. So this, the forms or the physiognomy of your environment is the actual way your space is set up. Okay. So it's where your bed is positioned, where your desk is positioned, where your, um, you, you know, in, in your external environment where mountains and water are in relation to your home, how does your natural environment support you? Um, and of course, Feng Shui is also the way you fill the space and how you use a space. And this is why I say that we don't really use items in Feng Shui. But again, forms and the way your space is set up, you have to have good forms in order to receive um, some of the best energy. There's sometimes the rules are broken, but we won't get into that. Okay, so. Um, Shuang Kong Flying Stars is the name of the Flying Star system. Again, it's a formula system. It falls under the San Yuan School. Um, so it's a formula school. Um, the it's it's the same type of of it's in in the same way that Eight Mansions Feng Shui is a formula school because it's based off the way your home sits. Um, Flying stars is a formula school. It's a formulas. Excuse me. <clears throat> Need an extra cup of coffee today. So feng, the flying stars is literally a time space coordinate because you might not know that these flying stars are actually based on constellations of planetary positions in the sky. And during certain times, they go to certain areas and they affect certain areas of our home or certain walls certain sectors. And so that's that's when we can kind of chart and map them. So this is the space is the constellations and the time is based on changing energies. So this can look like a natal chart of your home, which is based on the, 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 the time again, the timing that your home is built. And so if your home is built during a certain time, it's going to be receiving a certain energy that's kind of native to that house. And so that is an unchanging thing unless you uh, what is called update the period of your home. But again, we're not going to get into that today. The yearly stars come in in a yearly uh, manner. So they come in every year. Um, the monthly stars, the stars change monthly, daily and even hourly. Um, the daily and hourly stars we don't really tend to use a lot unless you're doing a feng shui activation. So feng shui activations, um, what we really check for is certain combinations of flying stars and to make sure that negative um, stars or stars that come in that could interact negatively aren't in that area. And they generally have a shorter, faster term effect. And so if you're wanting to see a result, you can chase some of these um, especially like the monthly energies around you can work in those areas and you can be receiving that energy um, and it can have a fast effect so it can help boost you up so again form supersede formula so you follow the form rules both like bed placement stuff placement desk position follow that first um, for a long-term setup of your home if a feng shui master comes in and they map the areas out in different ways. So this is only one system. It is not the end all be all. There's different formulas that can be used. And so if a feng shui master were to come and move your bed in a certain position, um, they have a reason for that. And you might, it might not be following flying stars. It might be following something else. Okay. But for you, just setting up, just learning 
follow what are called feng shui forms seeing the door but not head on no beams no sloped roofs okay because what happens i'll tell you this when a negative flying star comes in that area the energy you're receiving is negative because you have you have a suppression of energy and so that suppression of energy then will be um it'll aggra be aggravated by that negative flying star so hope that makes sense <clears throat> we'll go a little bit over the element cycle i'm not going to get too much into this but we'll come back to it and reference it in a minute so directions quas and elements i'm sorry i'm really trying not to yawn the actual compass direction is called a qua sector or palace so those terms are used interchangeably number is also associated with each sector and so i'm going to be referring to the numbers today so i might be like number two comes from the southwest okay and we'll go over that in a second the there's a yj trigram associated with it and there's no fixed life areas these can all interact in different ways according to your personal energy it can look like a pie shape this is what i lay over your floor plan and so if you need help with that let me know so each sector wall it can represent a thousand things so it can represent the number a trigram um, element a body part an organ and emotion even a person and a season so this shows what energy is like native to that palace or sector so for today we're going to refer to the stars as numbers one through nine and let's go over them quickly i'm not going to spend too too much time on this because there's so many resources about the attributes of each flying star so for today i mostly want to explain um when they're moving what happens okay or like kind of just explain the the um a very like abstract concept to you Whoa. okay so north um number one comes from north and so what i like to do what i had the way i like to explain flying stars is that each number or each yeah each number it comes or is native to a certain area and so number one comes from the north they're from the north sometimes they're referred to as the one white the flying stars can be referred to as um, purple white stars and i'll explain that in a minute too there's a system of flying stars in, in a different way but uh, a one white comes from north or con palace remember these these terms are all interchangeable um it's referred to as a greedy wolf star um, and it's the element of water the two black sometimes it's referred to as the illness star um but it's called a huge door star it comes from the southwest or coon palace and it's an element of yin earth and so um try not to think of these stars or these attributes in a negative way when you have good forms especially in your external environment the stars tend to act in a positive way and they tend to support you in a positive way so that's why they say the most important thing is to actually look for a good external environment when you are buying a property because the positive attributes of your environment will make the um the stars inside good if you have a period eight home if you know what that means if you have water outside this area it makes the number two star uh, not negative. It's not it's not as bad as you, you would think, okay? So it's referred to as a huge door star. The east is the three star. It's called well, three jade. It's from the Shen Palace. And so it's called the rewards star. It's associated with the element of yang wood sometimes people call this the conflict star again don't get these ideas mixed up because there's actually ways to use these flying stars so don't think of them as positive or negative it depends is always the answer in feng shui <clears throat> number four green comes from the soon palace the southeast is called the literary arts and sometimes it's called the academy or academic star element of yin wood the northwest six white 
is called the Military Art Star, comes from Xi'an Palace, again from the Northwest. It's an element of Yang metal. From the West, from Dui Palace, is number seven star, the seven red. It's called the Broken Soldier Star. From the Northeast comes from, let's see here, Gun Palace is the eight white to the left assistant star i noticed there is three <laughs> there's three stars that are like are like white i don't know what the colors mean honestly i don't know if i ever find out i'll let y'all know it's the element of yang earth but they're, they're just referred to in this way it might have something to do with one of these ancient scroll books y'all let me know if y'all find out okay <laughs> the south uh number nine is called purple and so if you notice it can be referred to sometimes as the purple white stars um or purple white system is because the last star is purple the first star is white purple white this comes from the south palace is li gua it's sometimes called the right assistant star and is the element of fire like my headphones are like okay element of fire Boop. okay so from the the center if you may notice that when i was going through numeric uh order i skipped the five because the five um now this the five is always tricky okay it is the element of earth it's not associated with a gua or a sector because the center um isn't and so it's called the chastity star it comes from the center and it's not associated with that trigram like i said um the five oh first put yellow sometimes it's called the five yellow um it directs the energy the center actually directs the energy on where to go and so the flying stars actually fly from the center to the northwest so that's all i'm going to talk about kind of on flying they um almost always fly from center to northwest there's uh the odd occasion where they can fly a different way um we will not discuss that to not confuse you today so the five um i've talked about this before but it's associated with earth but almost like a lava and so sometimes it can be very very fertile fertile grounds and um, if you think of the island of hawaii it's almost i think entirely built from volcanic eruption and it's just lush and beautiful um, i used to live in the island of okinawa when i was a little girl and the same thing um it's the chain of islands that were built from volcanic eruptions and i mean it's so so beautiful flower beautiful tropical flowers lush green very humid so beautiful and so that can be the flies the five when it displays the positive attributes but when it decides it will not display positive attributes um, it can be volatile just like a volcanic eruption it can be lava destroying everything in its path and for this reason we don't activate an area or tend to use an area where the five star is visiting you just don't know sometimes um this year it's actually visiting the southeast and it's controlled a little bit because if you look at the element cycle wood is controlling the earth okay so how it works flying stars the energy mapping of your space is based on the direction your house sits and faces when we're looking at natal stars um this shows us where the energies fall in your space this allows us to set up feng shui with a naturally supportive energy from these stars okay again think of flying stars like a native resident that's traveling to another country when they go okay so the sector they're from is called the hometown I'm trying to make sure I don't have any, do I have any questions? Okay. I'll look back through, I don't see any questions. Okay, so I'm gonna look back through when I am done and I'm going to make sure I don't have questions. If you're watching this on a replay, feel free to ask questions, I'll reply. Okay, so we're gonna think of flying stars like a native resident that travels to another country. So if you think about it, um, the sector where they're from is called their hometown. And they can leave these areas, they can leave their hometown and visit other sectors. It's just like a native person that's you know from a certain town traveling to another town. Think about that. It can be called a palace sector or a wall. So let's, <clears throat> Let's think of this in terms of a story, okay?
So today we're going to go with flying star number one. We're going to go with one white. He is traveling from the land of water, Con Palace, and the north. So these are all attributes that describe the seafaring community. He um, lives on the ocean. You know, he's he's a seafaring uh, uh, people here. Um, he's happy to live in the water. You know, he's very comfortable with water. Um, he's element of water, much like his hometown. Okay, he's he's from water. But he decides one day, so it's a new year, and he's like, you know what, instead of traveling to, to instead of staying in my north of my hometown, I'm going to travel to a different wall. It's time to travel out of my comfort zone, okay? So flying stars can take up residence in the Gua or area sector for different periods of time. So the natal chart of a home it's kind of like a permanent resident from another country. So I'm from the US, but if I decide I'm gonna go live in Canada, um, you know, I'm still from the US and I still bring my personal energy with me. I might bring my customs with me and, and stuff like that, but I am now living and residing in another country, okay? So maybe you're a more permanent resident because these these don't change. These stars don't change, um, not generally. There's times where you can update the period of the home, but that's done by removing part of part of the roof and having the sun actually touch the or you know the. There's done in different ways. So sun comes in for a period of time. Period of the home is updated, and a different permanent resident moves in <laughs> okay so it can come in yearly so say i am now an exchange student i'm traveling to canada but i'm only gonna stay there for a year okay they can travel monthly i'm just gonna go visit my auntie in canada for a month okay they could change daily i'm just going on a day trip i have a meeting i'll be in and out on that day an hourly um that's a quick one i'm having a lunch date and the hourly energy visits for the hour and they're out that's that's how you can think of these energies okay so number one now decided that he was going to travel to the northeast okay so he decides you know what it's time to go to gun palace then gua um and in this area there's mountains because this energy the native energy doesn't change remember it's like the country itself the flying stars are like the residents okay so he brings his energy with him so north decides you know i'm gonna go a little bit east I'm traveling here to the northeast and I'm going to be in this land of mountains now. So he goes and he meets the residents there, the native energies that are there. And we have to think about how the energy interacts in that sector. So are the native is the native energy going to be hostile towards this new energy? OK. Does the environment support the element? And here. We kind of go back to the element cycle. We can go back to that and we'll look at that closely in a minute, but just bear with me on the story here. Just stick with me for story time. These mountains, remember earth controls water and the element cycle earth controls water. And so it's not interacting in a bad or negative way, but maybe number one goes here and he's like, I feel a little bit stressed out because um, the mountain energy is too controlling for me. Maybe this environment's a little too controlling for him. Okay, but it's good. It's not. It's not negative. It's not bad. Think of the flying stars in terms of, of pictures when you first start. So again, looking at the environment, we know it, mountains give boundary to water. It controls the water. If we didn't have mountains, the water would just float over the entire earth. It was just a flat surface okay so but what happens now if number one decides he wants to travel south to league wall instead he's like you know what i'm gonna go to this land of fire what happens he decides that he's gonna interact <laughs> with the natives but he's like completely overwhelmed because there is uh there is now um it's it's too controlling it's too controlling there's a clash there and now the energy is too too active okay too active this might be a little bit of a bad example because flying star number one and interacts with the palace nine okay but let's just say here um 
you have this energy and you're like, well, there's a fire and water clash. Um, some objects can help. Okay, so say for example, for the year, you wanna place some things out. What I always recommend is natural stones and crystals, probably larger chunks of quartz, rose quartz, stuff like that. That's what I use. I don't use um, pictures and stuff like that. I use natural elements. When I say weight, I mean a weight. I'm in the north right now, and to control the number two flying star for the year, I'm using metal. I literally have one of these weights sitting over here. Okay. Um, a candle because it's, an, it's a real element of fire, a plant because it's real, and a fish tank because it's real water. Water is a great conductor of and uh, um, activation activator of chi energy it holds holds energy activates the space so for this example i'm going to talk to you about flying star number nine he is from the land of lee he's from the south the land of fire um he's happy here in his little fire area he has a cute little face he decides that he wants to travel okay meet lee meet number nine he has decided that for that year, he's going to travel to the north. He's going to the seafaring town now, okay? Do you think fire is going to be happy here? You know, he gets there, and then again, you have to look at how the energy is interacting. So if you think of an ocean and a candle, that's not really going to work. The water completely overwhelms the fire, okay? And so if we then kind of refer to the element cycle, Water controls fire, Oops, controls the fire. Um, but if you wanna look at what can bridge the gap in the element cycle, you refer to this element of wood. See, it creates a bridge here to now support the fire and absorb some of the water. So now fire has come, but he's brought a gift of wood. And so the natives are happier they are feeding into this wood here and, and the wood is absorbing some of the water and now the wood can feel this fire here. Okay, if that makes sense. Okay. So hopefully that explains. Just think of them as, think of them as native residents traveling to a different area for a period of time. The energies all travel um, all the time. They travel all the time. Different charts are formed. Um, these are only a small number of the amount of charts that can actually be formed, um, which I talked about earlier, the natal chart. This is based on the sitting and facing direction of your home and the year your home is built. And this typically lasts over a 20 year period of time. So living in a home for about 20 years, you're gonna feel the effect of the natal stars. If you are only going to live in a house for a few years, um, maybe for a year, you're there short term, wouldn't even worry about the natal stars, okay? Um, but these are typically used to set up where your bed is, you know, where, your posi where, where you want your room to be, where you want your kid's room, where you want to be sleeping, where you want the stove. You can use it for your desk. Yearly flying stars. Remember, the flying stars based on they move based on the year. So after February sixth or so, the flying stars will move for the year. They'll be visiting that area for the year. Okay, the monthly flying stars. So they're going to be. You have to remember that the flying stars move based on the solar calendar so the solar calendar starts um, around the sixth or seventh of each month kind of depending so um it's it's a little bit varied depending on the solar cycle that year it's never too far off of that but anywhere from the fourth to the seventh of, of a month okay <laughs> so it doesn't change on the first daily energy that changes um every day and hourly again those are only used for activations for short term, okay? Energy mapping of the stars can also be done using a technique called purple white. Um, you just call purple white script or scrolls. This is replacement stars is known as. And so this is used when you have um, a multi-unit complex or different floors because the energy is not all the same. So even though all the, all the doors might be facing south on a floor, your energy is not the same because we need to use something called um, 
purple white scripts or purple white scrolls. So that's when we have to use these. And it's it's a different way of flying uh, the flying stars based on your personal unit. So this is also used if you have a um, office building with a lot of different units in it. Okay. So when we look at this, one thing I can recommend to you is if you want to look at the different interactions of the stars, you can look at a book called 81 Combinations. Hmm. Let me see here. I thought I had it on my oh, I thought I had it on my my shelf right here. I it to that. Mm, I don't know. It's a Joey app book called the 81 Combinations. Hey, where's my book? <laughs> where's my book? Um, but only generally only look at two, maybe three flying stars at a time. We don't want to mix up too much when we're assessing flying stars, because if not, you're going to get something that looks like this. All these energies traveling to a certain place, like you're going to have your yearly stars, your monthly stars, your day stars, your natal stars, your, you know, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Look at one thing at a time. Look at one thing at a time. You don't want all these people visiting you at one time because it's 